People often assume that because Denton has over 270 gas wells in its city limits, that this must represent a sizable portion of its economy. But that is just an assumption. No one has done a systematic analysis of this issue. What I will present here is still not a comprehensive look, but it is enough to show that fracking is a tiny component of Denton's local economy. I am grateful to Matthew Fry and Jordan Kincaid for helping with this analysis. This research has not yet been peer-reviewed. I show you where I get my data so you can do your own investigation. Okay, now I think there are three main types of economic benefits from fracking. Jobs, tax revenues, and royalty payments. I want to focus on royalties, but first briefly on jobs. The mining industry accounts for just 0.2% of Denton's labor market, which is service and retail oriented in the main. We are not a resource boom town. The gas well sites themselves don't require much labor for most of their lives. Second, the taxes derived from oil and gas production locally in 2013 contributed just about 1% of our total property tax revenues. You can do this analysis by combining data found at these two sites. All right, let's turn to royalties. We don't actually have data on royalties, but what we do have are data from the Denton Central Appraisal District, or DCAD, from 188 of the active gas wells in the city. They track appraised mineral values, which can be treated as a proxy for royalties. Here is their site, along with the Texas Railroad Commission site to pinpoint the location of the wells. In 2013, the total appraised mineral value produced by these wells was nearly $86 million. How is this pie divided? and how much of that money stays local. The largest slice of that pie, about 75% or nearly $62 million, is taken by the oil and gas companies that operate in Denton. Note, and speaking of jobs, none of these operators are headquartered in Denton. Devon is headquartered in Oklahoma City. Others like XTO are based in Houston. Now let's look at the remaining slice of the pie, just over $24 million that belongs to the individuals and businesses that actually own the minerals underneath Denton. How is this divided? In Texas, the surface and mineral property estates can be split. That means the mineral owners who profit from fracking do not necessarily reside near the gas wells. Here's a typical picture of a Denton neighborhood where none of the homeowners are mineral owners. The severance of the estates creates the potential for environmental injustices. Those living on the surface and suffering the costs of a nearby industrial activity often do not enjoy the economic benefits and have limited say in the decision to frack. Okay, back to that $24 million slice of pie. There are just over 3,000 individuals and businesses that own minerals in Denton on these wells. But because you can own minerals without owning the surface, not all of these individuals and businesses are located in Denton, let alone right next to these wells. Indeed, they are spread across the country. You can divide them into five geographic categories based on where the owners actually reside. Only about $6.5 million, or just 27%, is owned by people and businesses actually located in Denton. Let's turn that locally owned wealth of $6.5 million into a pie chart of its own. It breaks down into three main categories. About half of that is owned by the city of Denton from fracking on public lands like North Lakes Park. This amounts to less than 1% of the city's total operating budget. A small slice, about $100,000, of this mineral value belongs to the Denton Independent School District from gas wells near schools. But despite making our students bear the risks of exposure from these wells, the payout from fracking only comprised 0.08% of the school district's budget in 2013. About 20% of that so-called locally owned slice actually belongs to Real Mineral Holdings, a company nominally based in Denton, but that actually represents an old ranching family whose members now live scattered across the country. There are other corporations that also take a share of this so-called local slice, despite what appears to be only a paper presence in Denton. There's really only about $1.7 million in appraised mineral values from these wells owned by actual families residing in Denton. That money is spread across 600 individuals, but there are just 24 families that own over one million dollars. That means four percent of those Denton-based mineral owners control over 60 percent of the appraised value belonging to Denton residents. Let's step back for a moment and emphasize this point. Only two percent of the total appraised value of gas wells in Denton belongs to actual families residing in Denton. Here are a few case studies. 
The first one is from Acme Unit 1H, located in the southern part of town. You can see that the people who actually live closest to the pad site do not own the minerals. Many of the 265 mineral owners with a share in this well live far away. Two of the three largest shares are owned by a company in Midland, Texas, in a church in South Dakota. Here is a similar map for the Razor Ranch wells operated now by legend. No one living nearby owns any of the minerals. Some of the largest shares go to people in Paradise Valley, Arizona, and Austin, Texas. And here is another neighborhood with fracking as close as 250 feet from homes. These wells are not in the DCAD database, but you can see on the P-12 forms from the Railroad Commission that no one in this neighborhood owns the mineral rights. This will be true for many of the new residential units built in Denton. They will be surrounded by wells, but the people will not benefit from them. Even if we add to the totals to account for the wells not in the database, we are still talking about a tiny slice of the economic pie. One could argue that Denton will see more money in the future as fracking intensifies. Indeed, in previous years, the total value from gas wells was higher than these 2013 levels. But the year with the most appraised value produced, 2010, was just one-third higher than these 2013 figures. Furthermore, you can see the steep decline in production from Barnett gas wells. So if fracking intensifies, it will bring only transient economic benefits. And of course, any future revenues from fracking will still be unfairly distributed as they are now, with most of the money going to people and corporations far removed from the harms. This production decline can be verified right here in Denton. Here are data from the Acme Brick 1H unit. Over just five years, the appraised values from this well dropped by 90%. So even if we refrack wells like this all over town, soon we'd be right back to current meager values or lower. Meanwhile, squeezing more out of the shale will require more intensive industrial activities, more chemicals, trucks, and emission. This means more negative externalities as this short-sighted extraction activity exacerbates Denton's already horrible air quality, industrializes neighborhoods, and leaves a landscape scarred with economically useless tracts of land in its wake. These are just some of the costs of fracking that do not make the ledgers because no one is tracking them. The people of Denton and the Maine do not benefit from fracking. We get the off-the-book costs, the pollution, the spills, the noise, ozone and doctor's bills, the truck traffic, lost property values and blowouts, while the lion's share of the wealth pours out of town. It all goes to show why it's time for a frack-free Denton.